Have you ever felt a sense of peaceful wonder watching an animated film? That's what you get with Studio Ghibli, the legendary Japanese anime studio. That's what you get with every single one of their 20 plus feature films, to a certain extent. For more than 35 years, audiences young and old have been captivated by Studio Ghibli movies. Well, most of them at least. The fact is, the studio has understandably had some hits and misses, and some of their films are obviously less loved than others. Today, I'm going to talk about one of those films, and that film is Ocean Waves. In this analysis, I'd like to explore a few reasons why Ocean Waves could be the most underrated Studio Ghibli movie. Ocean Waves is not a popular movie. It's easy to miss it in Studio Ghibli's portfolio, because this movie was released on TV in 1993 instead of in the theater, and it's consistently ranked one of the worst Studio Ghibli movies by critics. Out of 22 Studio Ghibli movies, Empire ranks it at number 22, Wired ranks it at number 20, The New York Times ranks it at number 20, The Guardian ranks it 15th, IMDb ranks it as the second worst Studio Ghibli movie, and GQ doesn't consider Ocean Waves at all. Yikes. Some critics complain about inferior animation, an unsatisfying story, and a lack of memorable moments. So why in the world would I say it's underrated? Well. I really enjoyed the movie. Okay, but seriously, I don't think Ocean Waves is in the top 5 Studio Ghibli movies, but I'm going to make the argument that it should be much closer to the top 10. So let's take a closer look at Ocean Waves. Here are 3 reasons why Ocean Waves is supremely underrated. Let me begin with the point that is most difficult to explain. If Ocean Waves is known for one thing, it's the fact that it's the first Studio Ghibli movie directed by someone other than Hayao Miyazaki or Isao Takahata, the studio's two main directors. It's instead directed by Mochizuki Tomomi, a 34-year-old at the time, who is almost 20 years younger than Hayao Miyazaki. It's commonly reported that this movie served as an opportunity for young animators to gain experience and spread their wings. Their mission was to make a movie together with very little time and a small budget, whereas many Studio Ghibli movies are known for taking at least two years to complete. The result was not great. Ocean Waves passed relatively unnoticed during its release, and the studio never made a movie with only young animators again. It was a failure. So how is this a good thing? It's a good thing because it shows that the studio cared about its employees, gaining experience and learning new things, something that is in the lifeblood of the studio's founder, Hayao Miyazaki. The fact that Ocean Waves exists shows that the studio was willing to give the youth a chance and try something new, albeit on a smaller scale. Studio Ghibli asked the question, can we take our epic style of storytelling and apply that to a slice of life high school drama and make that interesting? With positive reviews already for Only Yesterday, another slice of life drama released two years earlier, Ocean Waves seemed like a sensible experiment. And if it failed, then the studio can fail quickly and try something else. In today's business world, we call that innovation. Now I try my best not to let the production process of the film distract me from reviewing the film itself. However, knowing the circumstances surrounding the making of Ocean Waves can give us a greater appreciation of how a film can serve as a platform for young talents to learn and gain skills to help them in their future careers. Knowing this makes me appreciate Ocean Waves the film a lot more. But let's talk about the film itself. Reason number two that Ocean Waves is underrated is...
if you've seen Studio Ghibli movies, chances are you know of their many famous scores and soundtracks, mostly composed by the prolific Joe Hisashi. Music can make or break a movie, and in Ocean Wave's case, the music is the foundation of every emotion we experience throughout its runtime. Along with Kiki's Delivery Service and Princess Mononoke, I would say Ocean Wave's score is one of the best fitting scores to a Studio Ghibli protagonist. Composed by Shigeru Nagata, there are two pieces of music in particular that repeat themselves throughout the movie. First, this light motif from the track First Impressions. This plays every time our protagonist Taku finds himself in an awkward situation with the new girl, Rekaku. I know very little about music theory, but I know how this makes me feel. It's playful, innocent, but also on the edge of being flirtatious. It represents the apprehension and uncertainty of our protagonist, a teenager who isn't sure how to approach this foreign girl. It puts us in his adolescent shoes, evoking a feeling that we'll be embarrassed if we mess things up. To me, that's brilliant scoring. As film critic Brian Tellerico writes, Shigeru Nagata's score is constant, sometimes to a distracting degree in the first half, but it becomes a part of the fabric of the piece overall, and the film wouldn't work without it. I think he's right, just listen to this next example. The most standout motif of Ocean Wave's music is undoubtedly a variation of this track. Umini Naritara, or If I Became the Sea. This leitmotif appears several times during the movie, and embodies the laid-back mood of a lazy seaside town, as if time itself is standing still here. It's calming, it's nostalgic, and it's melancholic. It's also very repetitive, and where some critics may complain how it makes the film boring, I actually think it's deliberately repetitive showing us the isolation and mundaneness of life in this part of Japan. This is juxtaposed excellently with the melodrama happening among the town's high schoolers, and I think the music almost acts like a time capsule of sorts, capturing the memory of their shared social experiences. Speaking of memories and a shared experience, it's time to move on to the last reason why Ocean Waves is the most underrated Studio Ghibli movie, its message. I touched on this when I talked about the music, but Ocean Waves is about nostalgia. It's about remembering a simpler time in our lives when we didn't have the best control over our emotions. It's about a time when everything we did seemed so important, and every incident or mistake could seem like the end of the world. Whether it's rebelling against the school management for cancelling a school trip, or thinking a classmate is arrogant just because of the way she walked past you, or even being forced on an impromptu trip by someone who owes you money. Happens to everyone, right? We often judge the world and our lives based on the bubble of our immediate environment, and where we are now in life always seems to feel like the most challenging time for us. With Ocean Waves, I think the young animators are reflecting on their own high school lives, with their own memories of love triangles, bromances, and other relationships. However, despite some of these turbulent relationships, they look back on these memories with melancholy and some fondness, as if missing a time when all they needed to worry about was their relationships with other people. The movie's writer, Kaori Nakamura, is well aware of this, which is why the movie has a very tongue-in-cheek quality to it. <laughs> As mentioned by YouTuber Micah Buzan in his review, the film's title, Ocean Waves, 
is a metaphor for the turbulent emotions of our main characters and of adolescents in general, as feelings ebb and flow like the waves in the ocean. But Ocean Waves was not the original title of the film. The film's Japanese title translates to I Can Hear the Sea, which I think symbolizes something else. I think the sea here is a metaphor for the vastness of the world and our exposure to it as we get older. When we mature, we start to see things more clearly, and when we look back, things that seemed important to us then might seem like a very small thing today. This clarity is why the film is called I Can Hear the Sea, as if telling us that the sound of the sea only becomes clear to us when we're exposed to the larger world. All of this is conveyed in only 1 hour and 12 minutes, a very short runtime for a feature film. How is the message valuable today? I think one way to interpret this is in difficult times such as the one we face right now, the things that stay in our memories are not just the things that we experience, but the people we experience it with. Nothing today is ever as good or bad as we think, and as we grow into the future, we'll look back on days like today and appreciate how little we knew at the time. With Ocean Waves, the filmmakers were doing exactly that with their high school lives, making this an exceptionally raw and unique Studio Ghibli movie, a film that deserves your attention, and a film that, to me, is criminally underrated. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching that video, had so much fun making it. If you want to see more video essays like this, then hit that subscribe button and join the hype train. I'll be back with another video like this soon. So until next time, stay safe and I'll see you guys soon.